All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 333 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller, and um, before I get started, I want to thank everyone who's been joining the Discord uh, as of the last 48 hours. Um, if you haven't done so, uh, I would advise you to do it if you want to get a handful of Georgia Southern talks, and mainly, you know, Georgia Southern sports, football, um, baseball. Um, those are the two things that are going on right now, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be talking pretty much everything Georgia Southern. Uh, also, you know, we're going to have some Falcons talk there as well, because I do talk about the Falcons here. So, uh, uh, but the the flood, the influx, the, the you know, the surgeons of guys from Georgia Southern, the fan base is coming in to uh, join this squad. It's been amazing. I really want to thank you guys. Um, also, uh, shout out to gsufans.com. Um, it's a forum that is dedicated to uh, Georgia Southern uh, Athletics. Um, look, I this this is all just coming to full circle for me. For you know, I'm finally starting to see more fans be interactive. Uh, you know, I probably I, I've they've been there and I just haven't noticed. But the connection between what I'm doing and what more of the avid fans are doing is just great. And uh, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, I really appreciate the support. And um, I'm glad to be over there on GSU fans. And just as much as, you know, I'm glad that guys are over at the Discord. So the Discord, the link will be down in the description if you want to join the Discord and uh, continue to the talk that we do on a daily basis here when it comes to Georgia Southern. If this is your first time here, welcome to the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. I could be found on YouTube and Rumble. Also, if you want to listen to the audio, side of things i am on anchor uh, spotify and stitcher i'm also on apple and um google podcast as well so those are the five places you can find me anchor google i mean anchor spotify and stitcher apple and google so if you want to listen over there i advise you to do so because one of these platforms may go down i had an issue with the youtube side of things and um i could be found on the, uh, the audio side of things as well if something happens to your uh you know, your uh, avenue of choice. Uh, also, if you want to donate and help the, the channel and the podcast grow, the, all the links are down in the description and uh, we'll just continue to be rocking and rolling. All right. This Thursday morning, I want to talk about Robert Edwards III. Who is Robert Edwards III? Do you know who that is? Have you heard of him before? Well, he just recently, uh, you know, officially assigned with the Georgia Southern linebacker, um, uh, also running back. I think he's running back first. And, um, so, uh, just another person in the stable, either way, wherever you, when it, whatever way you look at it, another running back, another linebacker coach Helton has been doing a really good job of bringing these type of guys to the school. Um, he came down to Georgia Southern not too long ago. I think it was back in January, walked away impressed and, uh, he decided to make it official today. Um, his high school had, uh, you know, they had a big pep rally of the si of the signings, and he was one of a uh, uh, one of the you know high school players that chose Georgia Southern. And uh, we're going to get into his remarks about the reasoning why he chose Georgia Southern because I find it very fascinating. Because you know, you you all hear about the transition of the coaches coming from various places in the power five schools coming into the group of five into the Sun Belt, into the Statesboro to rebuild and, and well transform what Georgia Southern already had. And I've been saying this, I've been on record ever since that uh, coach Hel Helton came in. I knew something special could happen. I mean, you don't bring a guy in who had, you know, the resume of a coach Helton, Although, you know, some other people that are that I don't want to name here from a school in Southern California, I think I guess indirectly named that school, didn't I? They have like this. I don't know what you call it. They have like this hate, this vitriol. Or, um, it, it just doesn't make any sense that the things they say about our culture. And I talked about that in other episodes. But um, what I see, I see somebody that's going to make a difference. I see somebody that's going to make a change. I see someone that can literally lead this team to places far beyond what we can expect um, this year or, you know, the years down the road. 
I mean, we, we're we sitting here thinking about getting a Sun Belt title in a bowl game, which I really think that um, is quite possible. I think that's the, the I think that's the the highest expectation you honestly can think of, knowing the setup of college football. But I think they're looking at something bigger than that, and I, I'm dead serious. I, I I really feel like Jared Binko, AD Jared Binko, and head coach Clay Helton are looking at something much bigger than what we are seeing in front of us. And you got to have that visual. You have to have that visualization. You have to have that goal if you want to be great at whatever you do. And um, I think a lot of these kids see that. A lot of these kids can see that not only this going to help them, but it's going to help the school. Well, vice versa. That's they're going to be able to be great players. They've seen the pedigree of what uh, Coach Helton has done putting players in the NFL. You know. They've seen the things that he's done at the other level of college football. And you see the recruits that are coming in. You see the transfers that are coming in. And there's no different from Robert Evers III here. I mean, right now you're looking at a kid that is six foot, 202 pounds, runs a four 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 five. You know what I mean? I don't even know if this is up to date. I'm looking on his, uh, on his hoodoo.com. I don't know if that's the. I don't even know if that's updated, but I mean, he looks like he's ready to go at six foot two hundred two. You know, I mean, he he should be on campus by the time you know the fall season comes because the, he just had the you know the announcement today, and uh, I'm I'm looking at this like man, it just continues to get better. For Georgia Southern, I don't know if anybody noticed this or anybody is is paying attention. You know, if you've been, I mean, not you guys. I mean, if you've been listening and watching, and you you already know what's going on here. You know, I try to you know keep a balance on what's going on here, and you know, with Georgia Southern and, and Atlanta Falcons. But like right now, you know, I don't even want to talk about the Falcons right now because you see things moving over here, at Georgia Southern, and rightfully so. The Falcons are basically moving on to getting ready for the draft. So they're going to be a little bit quiet. You, We, we know that. You know, they're, 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 there's not much to talk about there because they don't want to force their hand. But trust and believe, we're going to get back into that because there's a lot to unpack there once we get the ball rolling. But when you look at the things that are being moved here in Statesboro, you have to sit back and be like, all right, this is something that whatever's going on here is, is is something, you know, big. You know, a lot of these rival, you know, teams or whatever are very quiet outside of a few fans that are Panther fans, but they they need to worry about their baseball team right now because uh we we we're looking pretty good in baseball right now. Looking pretty good. But the 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 Sun Belt has pretty much been put on notice. This this you, you uh, people who are football heads like we are, people who are understanding what the Sun Belt does, they they're seeing what's going on in Georgia Southern. They're like, oh, wait a minute, we don't have to worry about the option anymore. Wait a minute, that transition of the option to pro style football is is like that transition is moving really fast. We see guys coming in like a Robert Edwards, Zach Roseman. You know, the, 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 I don't even want to go down that list with the like Kyle Van Treese and you know, we just got finished talking about Najee Thompson coming back from his injury. It looks like he's going to be oh, he looks like he's going to be ready to go for special teams. So the special teams are going to get better once again, in my opinion. You you look at what we're doing here, and it's like. It ain't funny no more. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, the, the biggest thing you can say about this, you don't hear nothing. And I haven't seen it on my timeline. Maybe you guys know. You don't hear nothing from Appalachian State. Nothing. Those fans, as much as it's crazy and how much fun we make fun, of, as much as we make fun of them and we talk about them and how much we dislike them. Because, I mean, we don't. We talk about how much we hate App State, but we we just dislike them. We we really dislike. We have a high regard and high respect for that program, what they have up there in North Carolina. Very high high regard and high respect for them. 
we don't hate them, but we understand what's going on every time we suit up, you know, to play football against them. They know what's happening here is a big deal because the trash talk ain't there yet. It will be there, but it ain't there yet. And it's not even there on the level where it used to be. Yeah, they used to make fun of our offense. They couldn't stop it, but they used to make fun of our offense. They used to do just that in the third, but they know what's going on now. Georgia State don't see that yet. They, they're fun. They, they're having fun with their little two-game lead on us in the series or whatever. And rightfully so. They have, they have a right to brag, but they better be careful what's going on right now. I, I, I did, This is what's going on here. They better be very careful. And the rest of the Sun Belt is like, all right, the big news in the Sun Belt right now is what's happening in Statesboro. Make no mistake about that. Signings like this is a big deal. Signings like Terrence Gibbs is a big deal. Kyle Van Trees coming from Buffalo to come here is a big deal. The transfer from Houston, the wide receiver, is a big deal. The recruits that we're getting at wide receiver let put people on notice, knowing that okay, these guys are going to pass the ball. You don't think these guys are understanding what's happening at the, what happened at the scrimmage? Do you guys also realize that even though that, you know, I don't know when these other schools, uh, you know, uh, spring games are, but when we have ours, do you, I, I promise you, everybody in the Sun Belt, hell, some people even outside of the Sun Belt is going to be watching with Georgia Southern because they know the name of Georgia Southern. They know what Georgia Southern stands for. They know what Georgia Southern used to do, and they know what they're about to do now, and they want to see what happens with this offense. Make no mistake, they've heard about what, they, they've read or heard about what happened with the scrimmage games, the five touchdowns that, that, that's been thrown in scrimmage. I think the first time that, I think the first scrimmage we, were, we threw for like three or four, this one was five or six. Eyes are going to be on us. Don't don't get this twisted because it's, it's too big of a shift. It's too big of a transition to to really sit here and be like, okay, what are they doing down there? This ain't the same thing that's been going on. They're not going to be running the option. They threw what? They're throwing the ball? I know I put the, I, I put this team on a high pedestal. I sit here and say this, this team's going to win eight eight games. I I I that's wholeheartedly I feel that way. That's my expectation when you bring all these coaches and bring these recruits in. I I think that we could do that. I mean, we did it our first year when we got to the Sun Belt, right? So when you got a, a, another guy coming in like Robert Edwards, you got the guys that's coming in. That I don't even want to go down the list. You got players that's coming back. A Dylan Springer, a Todd Bradley Glenn. You got Not only you getting a, a plethora of good young talent coming in as freshmen, you got transfers coming in with experience and you got guys that have that have been here for years coming back to stay. You have a bridge between veterans and I know people don't like to talk about don't say you don't hear that much in college. You got veteran players coming in with younger players and a coaching staff that's going to bridge that gap for everybody to learn on one accord from each other and coexist together to make something. I mean, do you guys understand why I say what we're doing now? And I didn't, you know, I almost forgot about this kid with all the other running backs that we have. I almost forgot about it. I almost forgot about him until today when I saw that he was able to, you know, officially sign. And we sit here and talk about what these this other school in California talk about our coach, and they say this, that, and the third. I had somebody already come to my to my comment section again talking about what in the world Coach Helton, what secrets that they have that why the players or whatever don't like them. Let's. I, I'm tired of hearing that. I'm tired of hearing that. I don't care what the what. Southern Cal players and coaches or Barbara got to say about our coach. I don't care. 
I'm glad that you're watching the content. I appreciate it. But how does that benefit you? God, I really don't feel like talking about them right now, but and I'm not. But you have a coach. A coach that's been successful on the, you know, power five level. Go talk about him. But while they talk about our coach in the in a, in a bad light, I want you guys to hear what Rob Edwards had to say about this coach and our well, our coach and our coaching staff. Now, mind you, if you're listening to this on earphones, it may come in on one on, in one ear. So I'm just you're just being warned that you may only hear it in one ear because I tried to get it on both, but. You know, my audio mixer is, is just couldn't catch it on both sides. So here's what newly recruit, newly officially signed uh, running back, linebacker, Robert Edwards III had to say about this coaching staff. Southern, uh, it's a school. It's a great school. They rebuild their coaching staff from the ground up, and everybody they brought in so far has been excellent. Um, they make it feel like a family. The work ethic is crazy. I went down to one of their practices, and it's just – it's mind blowing the way they do things down there. It's just a great place to be. It's a great thing because I know he knows what it takes to not only play great at the level that we're at, at the Division One level, but also he's seen guys make it to levels above that. So I feel like he'd be the great, head, the best head coach for me to um, elevate my game and be the best player I can be. Y- y'all heard that, right? Y'all heard. Y- y'all heard what he said. I don't even need to, I really don't need to, you know, follow that up with whatever anybody wants to say about Coach Helton. He, and and everybody who has been coming in to Georgia Southern to see what they do. I've heard nothing but the same things from every other coach. I mean, every other player. Even the veterans. The guys who've been here four or five, six years, and in some cases seven, has had nothing but nice things to say. So I don't know what in the world that this other school is talking about when it comes to, oh, uh, you won't believe what the players have to say about this coach and that coach or whatever the case may be. Stop it. Because if it was a really big deal, it would have been like all over the place. I only hear this from crazy fans. Yes, you're going to hear about some things about a coach getting um, released because he didn't live up to expectations, but I have not heard one person say anything bad about Coach Helton. Like, really. I've never heard anybody say outside of these crazy fans. Because if he was that bad of a coach, when he got hired at Georgia Southern, everybody was, like, shocked and surprised because this is clearly a, a hire that, a hire that shouldn't have happened because we're a group of five school and he's a power five coach and he has a pedigree of making things happen. You don't sit at SC for 12 years for nothing. I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to stay off that. I'm just going to stay off that. I, I, congratulations! Oh, and I, I I wanted to be remiss, and I'm going to put this down in the um in the description because I I really want to do this. I'm sorry, I did not credit Rex Castillo on Twitter. Rex Castillo TV. I will put the link down in the description to this uh this clip of uh Rob Air was talking because I don't want to make it seem like I just took it and ran. I want to give credit where credit is due. I I do apologize. I was just caught up in the moment of what's going on in this school. I am super excited about what's going on here. And I mean, I'm so excited. Like I said, it's taken away from what the other side of this show is about is what's going on with the Falcons. But I mean, you guys understand at the end of the day. I know you guys do. But I will credit that definitely. The link will be down so you can check that out. And, um, so if you want to see it for yourself and uh, I, I don't even know what else to say. I think this is a great, another good signing. Just all the talent continue to come here. You know, there's a, you know, a couple of other running backs that we picked up, you know, the, the quarterbacks that we picked up and uh, I'm already hearing that the transfer portal is not over yet. It's not over yet. 
Coach Helton's probably gonna pick up one or two more people in the in, in the transfer portal from what I've heard. I ain't got no inside sources or nothing. It's just something that I heard. So I just can't wait to see how this plays out. If you you know, there's no reason not to be excited. This is this is great. This is great. If you like this content, hit the like button, share this content, subscribe to the YouTube or Rumble channel if you haven't already. Also, if you want to listen to this on the audio side of things, I am on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and uh, Google Podcasts. You can find your way over there and subscribe to any of those um, podcast uh, avenues. If you want to get, leave me a five-star rating, I really would appreciate it. Um, if you think I need to uh, do a little bit better, give me some feedback over there as well. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, and uh, hopefully I can get better throughout the day and um, day in and day out and be better. If you want to donate, all the links are down in the description. You can uh, find your way through PayPal, Cash App, or Anchor donations. It all helps to, It all helps this grow because we're, we are getting bigger. Shout out to GSUfans.com. Also, if you want to uh, join the Discord. The link will also be down in the description. Join the First of Frameries Discord. We'll continue to talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. And we also talk about other sports in between there because the baseball team is doing pretty good right now. They're doing really good. Top 25. What more could you ask for? You know, what more could you ask for? I will see you guys on Friday. I hope you guys have a great Thursday. Um... I really didn't want to say this. I, I before I, I do need to say this because I do have a secondary channel, and if you've been watching my content on my secondary channel, my secondary YouTube channel is a gaming channel, and um, I want to say this before I close. Um, I lost a really close friend of mine, uh, a childhood friend, uh, you know, yesterday, and uh, I'm trying my best not to really worry about it. Um, I, I want to continue to do the show and I think I did a pretty good job today because I know this is what he would want me to do. And, um, I know he has been watching the show, um, ever since his, in, in the, ever since I started the show and, um, I didn't get the chance to talk to him much, but the times we did, it had always been a great conversation. And, uh, you know, it, it kind of had me down a little bit today. I did a video about him on my other channel. If you want to check that out, it's the VF cast channel. And um, I just wanted to put that out there. You know, I lost a, a childhood friend, um, you know, yesterday. And it, it kind of sucks, but uh, just one day at a time, right? And it's, it's all fresh, but I, I'm I'm trying to continue to move like I would if, you know, because I, I, knew, I knew he would want me to. I knew he would, you know. Um, so I just wanted to put, put that out there in case if you see this content and you see my other content and it's like, oh, wait a minute, it's two different VFs. What's going on? You know, so I just want to let you guys know. Um, all right. So you guys take it easy. You guys be blessed. Make the most of your time, please make the most of your time. And I'll see you guys on a Friday. You take it easy. You guys be blessed. Peace.